So electricity and water don't usually mix, which is probably why we don't see a lot of showers with built-in lighting. So today, we're gonna fix that. Now, what if we could power a light using just the water itself, which is where this guy comes in. Now, this is a mini hydroelectric generator and we're gonna use it to create a water-powered LED system. No batteries, no plugging in, just pure hydroelectric power, which is probably a lot better than my current solution. So the idea is pretty straightforward, right? You have a hydroelectric generator that takes in water from this end, it spins this turbine, and it generates power out of these wires here. Okay, so technically I don't actually need water in this to spin the turbine. I can blow through it so we can actually test how much electricity or current we can actually get out of this. So I'm just hooking this up to my multimeter and we're gonna go ahead and blow through this to see how much, I mean, voltage we'll get. So let's see. <laughs> I'm getting a consistent, <coughs> excuse me, a consistent 12 volts out of this. Um, I'm not too sure how much current we're actually pulling, so let's alligator clip this to the LED strip to see if we can actually get this to turn on. Huh. Really? I might actually need a different LED strip. Okay, so I just had another realization there with the other LED strip. The fewer LEDs I use, the brighter this is going to turn on because it's less LEDs to share the power between them. So let's just try this small LED strip and see how bright this can get. Really, nothing? Is this not a 12 volt LED strip? Okay, so we're back and we picked up a few different components here. So a bunch of different cheap flashlights that hopefully we can take out the LED strip out of or the LEDs out of here and use them for our project. So a few different options that we have here. We have this lantern, oof, this little light here and this switch kind of light. So switches on and off. And then just in case I got this one here as well. Um, all just a couple bucks, so I don't mind taking these apart, seeing what's inside of them, and seeing what LEDs that we can use here. So I just took this whole thing apart and realized I wasn't recording. So, pretend? So it looks like this um, battery pack is four AAAs, so this means it's using six volts for this LED panel. Um, the 12 volts from the hydroelectric generator I don't think should be a problem as long as we're not putting in too much current. So let's hook this up with some alligator clips and just see what this does. Ooh. Kind of dim though. I don't know. This is definitely a contender. We'll put this to the side and let's try something else. There we go. Uh... Okay, more screws. So it looks like here is our little bar. Um, again, I'm gonna just hook up the alligator clips straight to here and see how this works. Positive, right there. Let's go ahead and test this out here. I tried so many different things to try to get the LEDs to turn on, but the most I ever got was a faint glow. I was convinced that the problem was with the LEDs, the generator produces 12 volts, and these are 5 volt LEDs, but if that's the case, I mean, shouldn't we be burning these out and not just having them glow dimly? You know, I was convinced that the issue had to be with the LEDs, so I decided to just walk away. But then that night, as I was about to fall asleep, I realized what the problem was. The problem wasn't the LEDs or the generator, the problem was me. Well, at least my lungs. See, my lungs produce a bell curve of power. It starts off weak, it builds up in peaks, and then it dies off. And I thought I could test the LEDs at the peak of the power, but the real issue comes from something called Lenz's Law. Lenz's Law is one of those physics concepts that you learn once and then completely forget about. But in simple terms, whenever you have something hooked up to a generator that's pulling current, it's going to induce an opposing magnetic field inside the generator causing resistance. Or in other words, the more current you pull off the generator, the harder this turbine is going to be to spin. Which is essentially how regenerative braking works in electric cars. When you're putting current back into the battery, it's causing resistance in the motors and that's slowing down your car. 
See, but my breath isn't able to overcome the internal resistance on the generator and we're not getting a true test for the power output. So I just did what I should have done to begin with and hooked it up to the shower. Okay, so that was a pretty successful test. Uh, I should have just done that to begin with. Um, I still want to change this LED out though for a 12 volt one. Maybe we can get this to be a little bit brighter. Okay, so I brought the shower head out here to my desk so I can work on it and connect everything that I need to. And I also purchased this 12 volt waterproof floodlight and I'm hoping this will be a little bit brighter for our purposes here. I just need to figure out a way to mount this to the shower head, but we'll, we'll get to that. There we go, we have the hydroelectric generator hooked up to our shower head, and now let's figure out where we're going to mount the floodlight. So I went down into the garage to try to find a bracket or something to mount the light to the shower head, and I found this waterproof 12 volt LED strip. I should have checked the garage to begin with, but I didn't. And so we're just going to use this because it's going to look a lot better, and hopefully this will work out. This will work out. Well, we'll see. And I'm just going to use this foam mounting tape to stick the LED strip directly on the head here. Hmm. It's not the best joint, but we're making a light for a shower, so I don't think it really matters. Okay, I think that is pretty much done. Let's go ahead and mount this into the shower and test it out. I put the cross-threaded coupler on. Let me switch this out. All right. I knew things were going a little too well for a second. Okay, we're finally done and we have it mounted. We're just gonna go ahead, turn the water on and give this a test. So here we go. There we go, look at that. Oh, that works so well. This is just working really well, check it out. So when the water turns on, it turns on. It's pretty bright, it lights up the shower pretty well. And I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. It's working pretty well. We have free energy. So there you have it guys. We've successfully pulled a little bit of free energy out of the shower to power a light. Now, it's not perfect. This project was more just a proof of concept, a fun little thing to see if we could get it to work. I may eventually want to experiment a little more with different LEDs, different generators to see if we can get it even brighter, or even adding a switch to turn the LED on and off when we don't want to use it. But what do you guys think? If you have any suggestions, leave it for me in the comments below. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to stay tuned for any future videos. And as always, Thanks for watching.